I'm drawing my University of Central Oklahoma defensive back, Kobe Stevens, who, who, who as a freshman, led led the team in pass breakups. Uh, Kobe, thank you for t- taking time to talk to me. Uh, could you start by telling the viewers and listeners a little bit about yourself? Uh, I mean, I was born and raised in Wewoka, Oklahoma. Uh, my whole life, I was – well, yeah, I grew up my whole life in Wewoka. Um, attended – well, I – Played football, basketball, and baseball track here in high school. Then, um, then I went to UCO for on a football scholarship. Then, I mean, I played there as a freshman. Um, started nine out of eleven games, and uh, yeah, that's just a little quick, brief summary about myself. Okay. Now you mentioned that you play all the sports in high school. So like when when did you when did you rest? <laughs> it seemed like you were going from sports to sports. <laughs> uh I would say the summer, but like I mean the summer, of course, we're working out. And I had AAU all summer. So I mean, it was really just all year round, really. Uh and then on the football field, and I was looking at your uh, uh, stats. I mean, you 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 played offense, you played defense, and you kicked. So like how did you like pace yourself throughout a full game because you're playing all three phases at some points. I know that had to be physically and mentally like taxing on you. Yeah, I mean, well, in high school, we, I mean, like the whole team, we played both ways. So, like, I mean, in practice, we just really ran and it was really conditioning. I mean, we conditioned every day or whatever. And uh, I mean, really just prepping your body right, you know, working out off season. Really, just taking care of your body. That's how we did it here. Uh, and then, you know, looking at your uh, numbers, that I mean, you you had what we're looking at, at like career wise, you had over like a hundred and twenty some odd touchdowns, man. I mean, like you just like live in the you just like live in the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like what? <laughs> like what? What? What contributed to your success scoring wise? Uh. Pfft. I, I mean, a key factor was really our receivers. You know, they, I mean, they helped spread the field out. Easy, I mean, it was easy with them. You know, they occupied the the back seven, really. So it was really just whoever's in the box against our own line, really. I mean, it was just straightforward. Uh, and then defensively, you, you had you had eight of your 13 career interceptions as a senior. So what – what was the big jump from your junior to your – well, I guess your first three years to your senior year as, as, as far as picks are concerned? Um, The first – I'll say the first two years, I was really – I mean, I'm not – yeah, I was really like, you know, just still getting a feeling of high school or whatever. And uh, junior and senior year, I started being more loose and my coach started being more lenient, like our alignment, how we – do stuff and really just let us, you know, play football type and not just like in a systematic form. Okay, so your senior goes, you you have a great season. I think you're all state. You, you get, so what then leads you to decide that UCO is, is where you wanted to, to start your college career? Um, as the recruiting went on, um, by they were at the school almost every other week. Um, the facilities are nice. And, um, I mean, I went on an official visit, and, like, the people I met there, like Jonathan Mosley, I mean, he talked it up real nice. I mean, um, it was a few others I can't think of, but, I mean, they talked it up nice, talked about the facilities, the school, just in general. So, I mean, I felt like it would be a pretty good fit. And, plus, like, everyone I talked to, they, it was like a family. It was all close-knit. So, and that's what I was looking for. Now, when, when you were going through the recruiting process, like, did you have a preference on which position you wanted to play, or did it did it did it matter to you at all? Um, it didn't really matter, but like all the looks I did get, it was for defense or just an athlete in general. And I mean, I had a few offensives, but they was like a hybrid back, like more of a running back type. And I was, yeah, it was just defense really. Okay, so you get to UCO, and then you were an, a, a, you were listed as a safety in high school, and then you're a corner. So, what was that adjustment like for you moving from safety to corner? Uh, 
Um, it, it was pretty rough. Yeah, it was because like I mean I never played corner in my life, but like I mean it was rough, especially switching right before you know like your college career because the speeds are different, the athleticism is different. Um, bigger players, faster players, smarter players. So I mean it, it was real tough. So I mean it just took a lot of work and my teammates of course, but yeah they helped out a lot. What was the what was the biggest challenge? Just uh, I'll say getting used to the physicality and the speed, really, because everything in college moves a lot faster. So your first okay, so your first game, you just talk me through that. Like, what were your emotions like? What, what were you nervous? What what was that experience like for you? Oh, uh, the first game. <laughs> I had a few kickoffs, and uh, I mean, they was out the back of the end zone, so it really, really no action. But uh, I remember my first snap on defense. It was like um, they ran like a, it was a power play or something, and like off the line, he just came up and just bulldogged me, and I about fell. Then I started pursuing the ball, and as I'm pursuing the ball, they bounce it back out, and I go to cut out, and there's a receiver again. And he just like cracks me, and I'm just thinking like, dang, if it. If this is gonna be college, like it's gonna be a rough year. I'm, I, I wasn't really down on myself, but I was like, like, dang, it was crazy. A lot happened in that one play. But yeah, I was, I mean, I was nervous for sure because I've never been on that stage, and I'm not gonna say out of position, but it was a new position for me or whatever. So yeah, it was a challenge. And then after that, that game, were the nerves gone, or were you still nervous at all at any point during the season? Uh, I'm going to say, for me, it's always, like, the first play jitters, like, until the first snap, like, all the way leading up until the first snap. But after the first snap, I'm, I mean, it's, it's all, they're going. Really just playing football after that. Okay. And then your first start, like, what, so, like, walk me through, yeah, walk me through, I guess, when you found out you was going to be starting and then what that experience was like. Uh, So... Well, so we had um, Boffman, Daniel Boffman. He went out the first game or whatever with the neck injury. And then um, Keyshawn Murray, he got – he was in, ahead of me. And then he got hurt too. I think he messed his um, growing up or quad. And Coach told us in like a film study, like he put the death chart up there and I saw my name. I was like, I, I mean, I was nervous. But like I knew it was time, you know, to like man up type. And um, – yeah, I was nervous all the way into the I mean, the game. I was still nervous in the game. But, like, after the first few plays, I was – I mean, it was pretty good. Then the, my teammates, they just helped me throughout the week. Like, um, just mentally they kept kept me up. And, like, if I did mess up, you know, they was there to pick me back up or whatever. So did you have to – did you pre- prepare differently, I, I guess, as a as a starter compared to a reserve? Because sometimes some people practice the same regardless, and then some, I know, take it up a notch when they're starting and when they're not. Did you – was you, like, the, the same throughout your preparation, or did you have to adjust? Um, I feel like I was the same because, like, being a reserve, I knew I had, like – you know, I had to earn a position because, like – a position wasn't given. So, I mean, I didn't really switch nothing up throughout practice, like my energy wise or anything like that. So, I feel like, yeah, I'll stay the same. Okay. Uh, and then, what, what, what really impressed me about you was the, the Northeastern State game. There was, there was at the end of the first half, uh, you were matched up against Mark Whelan, one of the, one of the better receivers in the conference, and he did score on you at the end of the half. But you came back in that second half, man, and I was like, this dude is like Velcro right there. And to me, it just like that kickstarted a, like a really good end of season for you. Now, a lot of young corners, especially ones that are new to the position, that would kind of mess with their confidence. But for you, it seemed like if it had an effect, you weren't showing it. So, like, how were you able to kind of bounce back from that literally in the same game? Uh, I'm uh when when it happened i was i'm not yeah i was down on myself because that's like a lonely feeling when you get scored on especially how it happened but uh i mean i really i never just i mean it's like you got to have short-term memory in football so i mean it happened like oh well you can't dwell on it or 
you know, you're going to keep messing up or whatever. Your confidence is going to be low. And, um, I mean, I have some teammates. They picked me up, of course. But it's really just short-term memory for me. It's just next play mentality. And then the Central Missouri game I, I thought was really good because I know you had now that 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 forced fumble you had that like flew into the hands of Trayvon Craig and as it was at least accredited you with the the fumble. Uh what was that? What was that? I mean, like did, did when you stripped the ball, did you did you did you know Trayvon was there or was it just it just happened to land in Trayvon's hands? Like did you just rip it and it landed no, there think, or did you see um, it? It was I think it was me, Michael Slater, and it was somebody else. But, like, I mean, I just know it's a big collision and the ball popped out. And I, mean, I was on the ground, and uh, I think it was Malik Gray. He was hurt. So I'm, like, looking at Malik, like, is he all right? And I just hear a bunch of screaming or whatever. And Trey, I mean, I look up, and Trey got the ball or whatever running down the field. So I was I, mean, I was still lost to, like, what happened because I really didn't know what happened. Uh, and then at some point in that game, there was a play. It seemed eerily similar uh, uh, to the, the, the touchdown you allowed against Northeastern State, but you instead got the pass breakup. It was like a one on one. I think it was like a jump ball kind of in the corner of the of the of the end zone. So like at at that point, did, did you did you did you see the growth? I guess from that Northeastern State game, uh, at that point, from when you were able to make that play on a similar type of situation. Um. Uh, honestly, I think um, – I mean, the North – yeah, I saw growth, but what happened in NSU was really just like a – I mean, it was a – I was putting in a tough position kind of. Like, I mean, it was a eye violation or whatever. I, well, yeah, I just I, – uh, I played it more disciplined, yeah. I'll say that. I played it more disciplined. I saw the growth. And when you when you when you say that that you played it more disciplined, like what what does that detail? Um, all violation, um, hand placement, physicality off the line. It really just a bunch of the stuff we worked in practice, really. Uh, and then like you mentioned, like I mentioned before in the, in the in the open here, you 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 led the team in pass breakups. Like did, when you started that first game. Did you ever think you would have the type of season that you had from that point on? Because you're moving from safety to corner. It's like two games to the season here. You're you're or three games to the season. You're, you're you're now starting. You're still trying to adjust, and then you still in the in the season with the team leading seven breakups. Um. Really, I just I really just felt like I just had to get a grasp for it. Like once I had it, I had it, but it was just like um, the transition from corner to safety. It was, I mean, it was rough, but it was just like, once you have it, you have it type thing, just a confidence. Oh, so I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because some people might just think it's, it's interchangeable because you're both in the secondary. So like what to you were the, the major challenges outside of just the overall adjustment to college, but what from like a position standpoint uh, was some of your early challenges in your move from safety to corner? It's really just playing press man 90% of the game against the bigger receivers. Yeah, that was a challenge because um, I know Fort Hayes, they had like a 6'3", 220, and a 6'2", like 210 receiver in it. It's really just the ninety percent of the game we're playing man, like press man with no help. So that I think that's the biggest that's the biggest challenge. It's okay. Now you, you you mentioned the size difference that you face because the the conference has a lot of big body receivers. So like yeah. as as a, as a smaller DB, how did you kind of learn to to overcome that? Ah. Uh, Really just playing with confidence. Um, playing with confidence, being more physical, and just playing fast, really. Just no hesitation. Uh, okay, and then um, you got the coaching change. Uh, Bobek uh, steps down. Coach Doro comes in. How has that uh, adjustment period been like 
uh, from the old regime to the new regime? Um, I can't talk too much on the offensive side, but the defensive side, um, it once we started rolling, we started clicking pretty well. And I mean, the coaches, like I don't think there's many people. That, well, I don't know none that like dislikes the coaches or anything like that. I mean, it's really, it's really just like uh, everyone gets along. I mean, like in the fall, yeah, we were we were getting along or whatever. But now it's like everyone's coming out their shell, like being trying to be leaders and just helping each other out, holding each other more accountable. And like, um, I'm not saying like. We don't have as many people missing workouts and all that, so I feel like we're on a good track. And then, and then in spring, this past spring, for you individually, how do you feel like that went? Um, I, I feel like it went pretty well for the most part. It's still, I mean, aspects where I can improve, of course. But, um, yeah, I mean, I became more versatile over the spring. But, uh, yeah, I feel like it's been a pretty good spring so far. Now, when you say you became more versatile, like, in what sense? Because, like, our coaches, um, our d- defensive back coach, he would, like, move us to safety one, for, like, one scrimmage, move us to corner or whatever, just really moving us to get a look of both sides, like corner and safety, and um, just seeing, like, where we best fit at. So I mean that helps. That's helping being like helping us be more versatile as a defensive back. And you said that that there's still some things that you want to improve on. What what are some of those things that you want to improve on heading to the fall? Still, um, like physicality, being more consistent, um, continuing to push myself and like teammates harder. And, Uh, really just continue to do what we've been doing to get better and grow. Now, you all, you all, you, you did lose. I know Darius, Darius Hawkins, and 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 there, there was some other, some older guys that that are that are not longer there. So now, like now, kind of being a guy, battle tested guy, you started nine games. From a leadership standpoint, now, do do you feel like you have? Do you feel like you 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 have to? Um, assume a leadership role in that room, or can you still kind of stand back and let the veterans in the secondary kind of do most of that? See, I mean, that's what I was doing over the fall. I was, you know, just, I mean, over the spring, just stand in the back still. And um, we had our exit meetings, and some of the older guys and the coach, like, they basically told me to, like, I mean, like, I've been here, whatever, seen it, to, like, step up and be more of a leader and be more vocal instead of just like, I mean, staying in the back seat, just, just being satisfied with riding or whatever, you know, just chilling. And, and do you, do you, do you think that that would be a, a, a tough adjustment for you having to do that? Or do you think it, it'll be a pretty easy move from now kind of being in front of the pack instead of behind the pack? Um, I feel like it'd be an easy move, but it's still like a lot of responsibility coming with that. Okay. Um, okay. Now, I, I think everybody who follows knows how dominant that defensive front was this past season. So, as a defensive back, like, how big is it to to have that quality defensive line that that really that puts the pressure on consistently there and it makes it tough on a quarterback? Like, what what is the advantage to that from your standpoint as a corner? Um. Most of the time, we know they're going to put pressure on the quarterback. Um, I mean, the advantage that it gives, like we know they're, we know that they're really not going to run the ball from week to week on us. But it puts more pressure on the secondary because we have to, you know, um, we have to guard better. We can't like we can't slip up as a whole, and like our slips slip ups are, I mean, you can easily see them because it's just you and another receiver in, in the open. Okay, now that's the thing because if you're impressed, man, it's like you and there's nobody else. So like, what? So like, no. So knowing the pressure on every snap, did like so like when when something happens, like like if your feet get tangled, if you slip, knowing that there's no one there, 
like, does that affect you at all, knowing that that wasn't really on you because of the circumstance, but at the same time, it technically is on you because it was your man? Yeah, I mean, regardless of what happens, like, if your man catches a ball, it's like, I mean, it. it's really like you let the whole defense, defense down. Like, you know, everybody else did their job, and you you slipped up, kind of. Okay. Now, after playing a lot of press man and then after being a high school safety, which I imagine detailed a lot of zone, which do you prefer, press man or zone? I'll say press man, yeah. Press man. Press man. Okay, so so why press man over zone? Um, press man is really because it's just you and him. I mean, you got whoever the bigger person is who's more dominant is. It really shows your dominance if you're just press man. I mean, I don't have a problem playing zone. Zone, I mean, either way with me, I mean, it doesn't affect. But, like, press man, you just – like, as a defensive back, to play press man a lot, you have to you have to be different. Kind of. Yeah, you have to be different. You got to have it, confidence in, in what you're doing and your teammates around you. Okay. Uh, and what are your goals uh, for the upcoming season? Uh, really, the only thing I want to happen, I mean, I see, like, all of the other UCL organizations coming back with, like, conference championships and all that. So, really, that's my biggest goal. I mean, I think that's a pretty big team goal, too. Really just playing the best to our best of our ability and pushing each other as hard as we can and hopefully come back with a conference championship. Okay. Um, but before I get you out of here, I do this with you know all the new guests, kind of get to know you questions type of things. Uh, so your 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 favorite sports team? Um, the Lakers. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Now, do you have a preference on the coach? Because I think they like listed like the the candidates are like uh, Darvin Ham and Terry Stotts, and it was somebody else. Like, are you? Well, <laughs> well I'm not gonna say I have a favorite sports team. I have a favorite player and it's LeBron. So really wherever LeBron goes, I mean that's where I'm at. So okay. Well okay, but yeah, given that he's currently in LA, the kind of a train wreck at that at, at the moment here. Yeah. What if if you were GM for a day, what do you what would you what do you think needs to be done to get that yeah, uh, I'll start by getting rid of Westbrook. He gotta go. <laughs> yeah, he gotta go. Oh man it's like religious in this state. Uh, he, he got it <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. Okay, your 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 favorite musical artist. I say Rod Wave. Rod Wave. Okay. Okay. Favorite uh, Rod Wave song. Twenty nineteen. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's see your favorite hobby outside of football. Uh. Pfft. Working out, really. That's all I do. Go to work, work out. Uh, yeah, that's literally it. Now, now, okay, now, are, are you more of an upper body workout guy or lower body workout guy now? Because, you know, there's some dudes in there that skip leg day, bro. <laughs> uh, uh, I will say during high school, it was really just upper body, upper body. But as I went to college and seeing like how important it is to develop lower body. I mean, don't get me wrong. We still did lower body, but it wasn't as aggressive as upper body. But uh, yeah, Coach Van Kieran, he's one thing you're going to do is you're going to do some legs in there every day. So, <laughs> and, and, okay. So, so what, what is your favorite, um, I guess like, uh, exercise to do? Is it like a bench? Is it a curl? Is it a, yes, a bench like press? It's a bench. bench? Press. I think okay. everybody on the team know that, though. I think so. Is, oh, no, you're not. But like, why? Why specifically the bench? Uh, really? Uh, I mean, that's what. Like growing up, that's what we worked on a lot. Yeah, just getting your bench press up. Okay. Okay. So, 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 okay. So, in terms of DBs, now you didn't get, you didn't get to name any names here, but like, where does your bench rank among that unit? The de- defensive backs. Defensive backs. Uh, 
I think I have the strongest bench as um as far as the defensive backs go, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, there we go. Um let's see, okay, your 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 favorite TV show. I I don't even watch TV. <laughs> I don't watch TV. Well, I mean I have a favorite Netflix, I guess you can say uh Money Heist, I guess, yeah. But that's the only okay. thing I watch. I don't watch TV. Okay. Okay. Um, she do, do you? Okay. So do you video game at all? Are you a gamer? Yeah, I play it. I play the game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Often. Now, are we talking? Are you an Xbox guy or a PlayStation guy? PlayStation. PlayStation. <laughs> okay. Wait. Now, why? Now, why is it PlayStation? Why? No, I had an Xbox for like I had an Xbox my whole life to like my sophomore year, maybe. In high school, then I mean, once I got the PlayStation, it was like no going back. I, I don't know. It's just something about the PlayStation. I don't know. Okay, so that, okay, so your your favorite video game then? Um, it's a tough one out of Madden and Two K. It's a tough. Mm-hmm. One. Okay, now now when you when you play Madden, who's your who's your go to team? I. It was the Chiefs till they got rid of um, Tyreek Hill. So, yeah, I don't know now. I haven't, I haven't really been playing it now. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. So 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 then is is like Tyreek Hill kind of like LeBron for you? Kind of just follow wherever he goes, or or like what was the Chiefs legitimately your team? Nah, the uh, my team was the um, Vikings because of Adrian Peterson. I was a big Adrian Peterson fan. But when he start bouncing around, I just really, I mean, I don't have a team now, but I play with Tyreek Hill on Madden because he a cheat code. I mean, we just seeing him streaks and he just out of there. So Man, go for the <laughs> go for the four yeah, versus yeah. cheese over here. Okay, you want to know yeah. go for the four versus cheese. Okay. Um let's see. Okay, your your favorite food. Mm. I don't think I have I have one really. I'd probably say the closest thing to it is um probably lasagna, yeah. Lasagna, okay, okay, that, that's a new one. Um hmm. oh okay, that's a new one now. Are you a, are you a pineapple on the pizza or pineapple off the pizza guy? No, I, I haven't ate pineapples on the pizza yet. Nah. <laughs> 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 no, I ain't tried that yet. Now, are we 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 hand tossed or thin crust now? Because that's also debatable. Uh, if we have pizza hut, I'm gonna have to go thin crust. But I mean, anywhere else, hand tossed. Because hand tossed is all you're gonna get at um, CC's. Yeah, we go to the DBs. We went to CC's every week, like once a week, every week for the whole season. Wait, so I felt like you, so like you, you all didn't get tired of it because I mean, you know what I mean? Like, by, by like week 10 or 11, it had to be getting nah, tired of um, our, our coach, he, um, so he'll get us peace on like Fridays before, like during our, um, our meetings, our last meetings of the week or whatever. He'll get us pizza, but we'll go Thursday, we'll all go to CC's like every week on a Thursday. I mean, I think we missed like maybe two weeks, maybe. But no, nah, we didn't get tired of it really. But okay, so we, so we you, got tired of the pizza he bought, but we still ate at CC's. But we got tired of the pizza he was bringing in. What was the difference? <laughs> like, what was the difference? I, I don't know. Probably because we ate CC's before, like the day before he brought the pizza in. So maybe that's what the difference. Okay. Well, okay. I, well, that is a pizza lover. Okay. Well, um, okay, okay. But then, so, so, so then. What is your favorite pizza in terms of toppings? Uh, CC's have they got? I mean, I don't know what's on there. I know it's onions, but I picked them off. But it's like a, it's like a barbecue pizza. I guess it's like chicken barbecue or barbecue chicken or something like that. I don't know what it's called. Okay, okay. Um, let's see. Do you have any pregame uh, routines or rituals that you normally do? Uh, no, I don't think I have any pregame rituals. 
I think that is our our whole pregame ritual is going to CC's. Get the pizza. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, now in terms of the swag and the gear, like is that something that 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 you plan out in advance? Is you that like gear? a feel? Yeah, is that like a feel of the moment thing? Is that like you plan that out for weeks in advance? How does that kind of happen for you? You see, some of our players on the team, yeah, they they that's all they worry about, like Trayvon Craig, uh, <laughs> even some of the coaches, and uh, Rayquan Wicks. Me, I mean, me, I don't. Ever since high school, like I don't wear nothing. Like um, I wore maybe two games. I wore tights, or it was one game. I wore tights. And then like we had the Fort Hayes game, which was it was real cold, and I had like no sleeves on, no socks. Or I had socks on. Don't get, I got socks on, but they're no shows. And I mean, they give me a lot of stuff about that. They're like, bro, you you're not wearing nothing. I'm like, I didn't know I have to. But oh, okay. But like now, like like now that get, but like now that now that it, you know it's it's there, it's accessible. So like, do do you plan to now attempt to add some swag to it this I, season? This year, I might. I mean, I might. I might have to this year so I can quit hearing them. They say I look vulnerable <laughs> without anything gone. But I mean, I might have to. It depends how I'm feeling. I mean, yeah, man. Because like you know, I'm looking over there and like you know. Trayvon has his bands on and the towel yeah, see, and, 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 and you know bug hide head. and I'm just like man there's Koi over here like it's some kind of like freshman initiation thing where like there's, <laughs> nah, like, nah. That, there's just no gear for this man. <laughs> no, nah, I mean I might have to in the fall though. I might you know throw a few sleeves on or some leg sleeves or something. I just yeah. feel like for me it just feel like it restricts you. I mean I don't know that might be some superstition, but I just feel like. It limits your moving or something, your ability or agility. Well, you know, I'm sure if you, you know, you probably gotta, you know, practice with it. You know, I'm sure you, you, you know, you probably get get used to it. But I, I recommend it at least in the in the in the cold because you know, like it's it's, it's, it's kind of cold up there in Kansas and Missouri, you know, yeah. in November. So I, would, <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, I if I mean, yeah, like sitting on the sideline, yes, it gets real cold. But like, if you're out there running, you're not gonna really get cold. So I mean, I just throw my gloves on, my little towel, and really, that's it. I gotta have the no-show socks on, though. That's a must. Okay, now, wait. Now this is looking okay, now. I I kind of have a theory as to why the DBs have towels, but some are gonna question like you all don't really catch passes. You know what I mean? I'm like you you go out there catching a ton of passes. So at that point, it's like, why is the towel there? So for I you. Think- I think for the DBs, for the most part, like our whole DB crew, I think it's just like a fashion statement because the towels, like me, Wicks, Boffman, like we literally just cut up a towel and it'd be like this thin, but like this long. So, I mean, it don't serve no purpose. I think it's just for looks. Wait, wait, wait. So you won't already use using a full towel? It's like- <laughs> yeah, we just cut off little strips like this. So I think it's just a fashion, fashion statement. <laughs> oh, that's great. Maybe okay, so so like then you could probably get what like a handful of games out of one towel then, right? And if you're cutting it up like nah, uh I mean I still have the towels from last season. I think a lot of us do. But I mean you do lose them from game to game, but I mean yeah, we just cut up some more and keep on going. Well, okay, that is a new one. Um see some favorite hobby, maybe. Oh, uh, okay. Good food for, for you, yeah. Um, okay, now, are, are, are you Pepsi or Coke guy? No, I don't drink dark pop. Huh? Uh, you don't, okay, so nah. just a water guy then? You just you just straight water? Uh, uh, no, I don't. I mean, during the season, I, I drink a lot of water, but now nah, I'm more of a sweet tea. Oh, oh okay, now, what, which, which brand are you rocking with here? Really, whatever brand the store got, but uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, I feel like I think it's it might be peak, peak. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, well, what do I have? So I guess my final question to you, well, get actually this too. Now you got there right when we got the white helmets. Now in the past we didn't have the white helmets; it was just the blue helmets. So when you all with icy white. I know I know your teammates that have been there had to be excited. 
So, like, were you kind of, I don't want to say, like, confused at that moment about their possible assignment, or were you just like, yeah, it's clean, you know what I mean? I feel like, I mean, I was, me personally, I was happy because in the blue helmets, I had, like, a big old Revo speed, and it was it was just ugly. So, with the white helmets and the F7s, I was probably just as happy as they was. And, like, we had a few, they had, like, good blue helmets. I mean, we practiced in them, but, like, they wanted to wear them during the game. And I'm like, no, I'm not wearing that helmet during the game. Like, and then, Wait, yeah, they got, so, okay. so what do you have against the Rebel Speed now? Because, you know, like, like for a period of time, like, the Rebel Speed was, like, the helmet that you wanted. And now you're over here saying, nah, yeah, I don't I mean, want the Rebel Speed. <laughs> it was, but that was, like, in 2014, 2015. <laughs> like, yeah, that's out of style. <laughs> My only thing I a Revo is like a, a speed flex. That's only like a speed flex. The only one I prefer. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, for those of us that still, you know, holding on to our PS3s and 360s playing in NCAA 14, Revo speed is about the best you're going to get, bro. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like when you said that, I'm like, man. Nah, I'll... <laughs> didn't do it. Okay. See, so I guess my final question for you would be. Uh, do you have a message for you know Bronco Nation out there as to about what they can expect from you this coming season? Uh, I don't have anything personal, but I will say, like, I mean, it's going to be a lot different, not just like at the games, but like just in general. Um, like you, you see a difference throughout the whole program, like from the classrooms. Um, cause they're real big on classes, like grades and all that. And, um, really just our work, work ethic. Uh, like you'll see a lot of us just getting like extra work after practice, no matter what time it is, extra field work, all that. And really, I mean, it's going to be a fun season. That's all I can say. Yeah. Well, Kobe, I appreciate you taking time this evening uh, to talk to me. Um, you're more than welcome to come back on at, at any time. And I'm, 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 you know, I'm hoping for a good sophomore season. Uh, you know, I know there's that whole sophomore slump slowly yeah. turning around <laughs> off me. You know, <laughs> so you know, I'm just hoping, hoping that uh, it doesn't, you know, strike you. But, but you know, I, I just want to, see, you know, I was, I was very impressed by your resilience there in the second half of that Northeastern State game, and then really down the stretch. I thought you played some really good football. Uh, against some some good physical receivers there, and, and especially as a freshman, holding your own there, uh, leading the team with seven breakups there, uh, forcing a fumble. I, I just I just wanted to commend you. Let you know that the Cho Show is 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 a big is a big fan, and uh, I, I just wish you, you know, the the best this this this, this uh, upcoming season. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No problem. Thank you, sir. 